in the life that we live, you and I always try to be the first at doing something. And being the first to do something generally means it comes with great honor, it has some prestige, and it is something, a record that no one really can take away from you. When we look at the lives of the believers, those that suffered greatly, one of those that comes to our mind and one of the first when it comes to actually doing or being the first to attain something, the name Sumayya always comes up. Sumayya was a believer during the time of the Prophet wasallam that earned the title of the first shaheed, the first one to be killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first one to be killed not because of anything except of La ilaha illallah. They say that she was one of the first seven Muslims, one of the first seven to embrace Islam with the Prophet ﷺ. When she embraced Islam, she was a woman that was not a slave, but had the status of a slave. She was married to a man by the name of Yasir, and they had a child with the name of Ammar. And the Prophet ﷺ loved this family dearly. And this was a family that entirely embraced Islam. And being from those that did not have a high status, it meant that they were going to face a lot of persecution. You know, one of the things that is difficult for us to understand, when we look at the beginning of Islam and we say, why did these slaves embrace Islam knowing the situation that they would be in, knowing the difficulties that they were going to face, knowing that they had nobody to support them? And sometimes what we have to understand is this is the price of Iman. Iman is something that it doesn't matter who it is given to, but the people that are given to, it is a honor that is given to them. And for them, they are willing to sacrifice no matter what it is for the sake of this La ilaha illallah. And this is what we see with Sumayya. And this is what we see with her family. To to the point where even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's unable to do anything for them, except he would go to them when he would see them getting punished. And he would say to them, Isbir ya ala yasir, or be patient, the family of Yasir, fa'inna mawidakum al jannah. Because your place, our meeting place is going to be Jannah. Your promise is Jannah. This is where you are going to go. And maybe it was this that would give Sumayya radiallahu anha, the strength to be able to continue on and to continue believing in La ilaha illallah with all of this difficult situation that she was finding herself in. Being that Ammar and being that Yasir, they were people from the Banu Makhzum or they had an allegiance with Banu Makhzum. The one that would be torturing her, the one that would be torturing them, the one that would be the one calling the people to torture them was none other than the Fir'aun of this Ummah, was none other than Abu Jahl, may Allah's curse be upon him. This was a person that de dedicated his entire life to the destruction of the Muslims and to try and to destroy Islam. But eventually, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day after the Battle of Badr, he tells Ammar, he says, Ya Ammar, rejoice, rejoice. It is a wonderful day for you. Even though we know the Battle of Badr was a wonderful day for all of the believers. He says, the killer of your mother has passed. The killer of your mother has been killed. Who? Abu Jahl has been killed. He is no more. Sumayya radiallahu anha, being from the earliest people to embrace Islam, meant that difficult situation that she was going to go through was going to be a very difficult situation but there's a lot for you and I to learn from her no one in this ummah is ever going to come and take away the title of the first shaheed from her there's not going to be a companion that was able to take it away forget about a people that come hundreds and thousands of years after her no one will take this honor but what did it mean for her to attain this honor it wasn't just like oh you believe in Allah khalas, we are going to kill you right then and there no we are going to break you first and try to make you return to it and and then if you are patient through that, then eventually we are going to kill you. How did she even get killed? One day she's taken out as the Muslims in those early days would be to the outskirts of Mecca in the boiling sun and they are going to be punished. They're going to be lashed. The rocks are going to be placed on top of them. Struggle after struggle after struggle they're going to go through with the purpose of just one thing. We want you to turn away from this religion that you have embraced. We want you to let go of La ilaha illallah. And this was the price that they had to pay. It wasn't like a time where they embraced Islam and Islam was easy. They were able to practice their religion just for saying La ilaha illallah. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَن يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ Their punishment was not except for anything besides the fact that they said la ilaha illallah, the fact that they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happens to her, she's going through this torture over and over, they're punishing her. And then one day they practice what they would actually do. They would take them after dhuhr 
and they would keep them until evening and then they would take them back and then bring them out the same day because the other times it was not hot enough for them to be taken out they wanted them to feel the punishment that they would go through can you imagine for the sake of la ilaha illallah going through these type of persecutions and this is why we love the companions radiallahu anhum ajma'in so much especially those that embrace islam in the early days can you imagine being only from the seven of the believers at this moment. No one else has Iman at this stage. You are the seventh one to embrace Islam. And then what is happening? You are being tested for this Iman of yours. So one day an evening comes and she's tied to a pillar. Abu Jahl comes to her and he begins to mock her and he begins to taunt her and he begins to lash her and so on. She's unable to bear it. So she says something that makes him angry. And anger overtakes him to the point where he takes his spear and he impales her and he makes it go through her body and she dies like this. Now I want you to picture this moment, a moment that is extremely difficult. You and I would look and say, you know what, Abu Jahl was most likely someone very happy at this moment. He thought he was getting victory. He thought by killing her, the rest of the family might turn. He thought by getting rid of her, Iman might be stopped. But he didn't realize the moment that the spear touched her, it was the moment that her soul went to Jannah. It was the moment where all of the difficulties of this life went away. It was the moment in which she was going to look back and say, at that moment I earned the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, something that you and I need to understand, Jannah is not going to be attained with ease, with every difficulty, ease is there. But you have to go through those difficult situations, you have to go through those difficult moments so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could purify you, so that honor could be given to you, so that you could be elevated and you could be from those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Without a doubt we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with Sumayya because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go back and he would continue to make dua for her and he would continue to tell her son Ammar about her and where she is and give him glad tidings so that he can continue even though he was going through a difficult situation even though the punishment continued he would tell them O oh family of Yasir be patient your promise your place that you are going to go back and meet your mother it is going to be Jannah. So even with the sacrifice that she was made, look at the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted her, the difficulty that came to her, and the ease that came right after. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease all of our affairs.